Good evening and welcome back. This lecture will be kind of a bonus lecture, I suppose. So it's not necessarily one that you need to watch or follow along with to keep up with the rest of the content, especially if you got the concept behind what was happening in the blueprint for the powered up projectile in the player blueprint. So I'm just going to open that. And basically what we'll be doing is I did mention for anyone who's new to this, who may not have got the concept the first time around, um, and I needed to kind of get through that just to get the functionality in in that lecture. I did say that we'd come back to this and I would go back over it and make sense of it a bit more. So that's what we're doing here. So if you wanted to stick around and find out how I'm going to debug this and the kind of logic I use, feel free. However, if you did understand this uh, theory the first time around and you just wanted to skip to the next lecture, perfectly fine. I promise I won't be adding anything in this lecture, so feel free to jump ahead. So what I'll do is we're going to debug through this for anyone who's stuck around. Uh, we will go through this one step at a time and we'll see what each number is doing so that we can get a better idea, a better understanding of how this loop is working and how the variables are being altered on each step. So to do this, the first method I'll take is I'm going to add a breakpoint here. So I'm going to get hit F9 on the Spawn Actor BP player. And if we go back to the main and press play and then fire, that will take us into this breakpoint as we've seen before. And then if we move back a little, what we should expect, we're going to get the number four being passed in here. And we know that because at this stage, on the event graph, this has already been called. The power fire up has already been called, and the number four has been passed in here. So if we go to the power up fire, we can reconfirm this. So here we can see it says current value equals four. So that's what I expected. And then the current value of four is being passed into this division. So four divided by two is two. And obviously this is divided by minus two, so we'll get minus two. So we'll have four divided by minus two, and then we can just reconfirm our assumption again is minus two. So there we go, that's what we expected to see. And then the next thing is this pin has called the set offset node. So now the return value from this will be setting the current offset value. So we'd expect this to be minus two as well. So we'll double check. And there we go, we have that as minus two. So, so far we're doing well. <laughs> And the last value in here will be four because again, that's coming straight from here. So we have uh, a for loop with a maximum length of four. And then with that, we will be using these values down here. So the offset will now be minus two. That's just being changed to a float value. So it's now just minus 2.0. So it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Times five. So again, a minus times a positive is still a minus. So we'll have minus 10. 2 times 5 is 10, um, with the minus value that's minus 10. So what we're doing is we are then taking this float value, adding that to the current transform plus the 10 that we've just given, or the minus 10, and storing that in the Z location. So we'll get a Z location of minus 10. So the first projectile will be lower in the screen position. And same for the rotation, really. I'm going to get minus 10 in the rotation, so it will be facing down the screen a little bit. So this just means that as we get this arc of projectiles, the lowest projectile will be looking down, the next projectile will be looking slightly more forward, the third projectile will be looking central and in the center of the screen, and then the last two will do the same as the bottom two but in reverse. They'll be looking slightly more up until the last one works looking completely up. And then all we're doing at the end of this is once we've spawned the BP player, we're going to set the offset again, and we'll be setting that to the current offset, which is minus two at the moment plus one, so we'll be storing minus one in here. So we can confirm that as well. So if we step into this, nothing should have happened at this point. So these values will still be the same. We need to step into this one more time, and that will take us to the BP player script, and the construction script is called. And that's because the next thing that's happened is, because we're being a bit silly at the moment, and we're calling the BP player as the projectile, it's created a brand new player, so it's debugging. The next thing that will happen will be the construction script is called on the new player that's just been spawned in place of the projectile. So we can step past that bit as well. We don't care about the new player that we've just created. 
but now this is the next time that this for loop has been called. So the for loop is now on the first index rather than the zeroth index. So what we'll have is past the for loop, the value here should now have been affected. So this should be minus one. So we're going to have an offset of minus one because the addition was done previously, which means that if we go down here, what we now have is a an offset of minus one, which is the float of minus one times five will obviously be minus five. So now we've taken five off of the offset. So this will be five units higher in world space and it will also have a five unit difference in rotation. So then if we step through again, get to the point where we're on the next player or the next projectile, and we now have a current value of zero because again, uh, minus one plus one is zero. So now this means because we have an odd number of projectiles, this will put the middle projectiles perfectly central in the world. So zero times five is zero. So we're gonna be passing zero into the offset and the roll. So this will be our third position for the third projectile. And then you can see what's happening there. So if we step through, we're gonna get the same thing. We're now gonna be on plus five. So one times five is five. So we're gonna get plus five in the location, plus five in the rotation and just step into the next one. So the next one would expect 10. So we're gonna get the offsets now being put to two. Two times five is 10. So we're gonna get 10 in location, 10 in rotation. So that will be the final projectile done. So now if we step through and step all the way through, we now have all of our projectiles and or ships, depending on what you want to call them. So that was a kind of long winded way to debug this, but I wanted to show you that because I think it's very useful to see the numbers changing as we go through remove that. Now the other way we could have done this which would have been slightly more time efficient is we can go down here and I should probably explain this is the value we're most interested in. Uh, this will be the thing which will most highlight what's happening. We could print out different values from here but they wouldn't necessarily mean much by themselves. But what we can do is just to reconfirm our logic of what we're aiming for. If we print string here, remove that as the duration. We want it to print the string. We want it to do a conversion from what it's passing into the location or the rotation. And we want it to print that to the screen. And I'm just going to make this last for a long time. So I've got time to talk about it. So I'll make this 900 seconds. And if I go to I was doing that in the wrong function. <laughs> Just cut that from the rocket projectile, paste that in the right function, do the same thing again. Okay, so from the for loop, I'm going to break that for the time being and then make that happen after the print string. So now every time we go through the for loop, it will call this print string, it will print out the value that it's at and then we'll spawn the player as usual. And this will just write it to the screen so we can see it happen instantly. So if I press fire, uh, there we go. At the top left, I'm just gonna F8 and pause this. Top left here, we can now see the first time it printed this, we're at minus 10, which is what we saw when we debugged through previously. The next time it was at minus five. And then the third time, the third time it went through the for loop, it was at zero fourth time it was at five and the fifth time it went through the for loop it was at ten. The other way we can check this is we now have a few more players in the uh, in the world and they should all have a slightly different rotation. So the first player that spawned is rotated slightly upwards to minus ten on the x-axis. The next one will be minus five on the x-axis the next again will be zero. And then we will have one at five and one at 10. So now we can start seeing this unfold. We can kind of begin to see what's going to be happening. So this one, when we get the projectiles, I think something strange is happening because the players have their own rotation stuff going on. So this isn't happening as it would happen for the projectiles. But you can see what's happening is when we do have the projectiles, 
it's going to look a little bit more exaggerated than this but the top projectile that's coming out will be in this position and looking up the screen and going in the direction it's facing the next projectile is going to be looking up and going in its direction that one will go out that way the bottom projectile will be going that way and the final projectile will be facing a lot further down and going out that way so this is what I mean by we've got an arc of projectiles happening so that kind of shows off a little bit clearer what's happening with the rotation and the positioning and that's what we'll be having coming from the player and it is this logic which is controlling that so that's both of the ways that I would debug this um, for instance when I was coming up with this logic when I was trying to work out how to make a nice looking arc uh, regardless of how many projectiles we put in this is how I was testing it I wasn't doing the debugging through step by step I was just printing to make sure that my maths was coming out with the values that I expected to see the addition of five units each projectile um, and when that wasn't working I'd tweak something over here play about it and go back so this is the way I would have debugged it because as I said it's slightly faster uh, rather than stepping through one breakpoint at a time. But I've chosen to show both ways just so that hopefully anyone who was struggling with that you can now definitely see how that's working. If not, still don't fret. Um, do feel free to get involved in the conversation, post something on the uh, chat board, and I'll try and make myself available as soon as I see any comments from you guys or any messages, and I'll try and find another way to explain it to get any concepts across which may not be too clear so don't be afraid to ask but for now I think that in video form that's pretty much as deep as I can go um, hopefully I've made sense of that to to most of you so I'll leave that here um, if you have been following along I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video don't follow along uh, <laughs> this was purely to see how we debug uh, if you have get rid of that print string plug the loop body back into the spawn actor to player get rid of any prints or anything you've had and any breakpoints um, compile and save that and we're done ready for the next section of the course and I look forward to seeing you there